So we are going into the next one here with a true bronze silver player. Beep Boop has is ranked with all three races um, from 20, 2000, or I think 1800 MMR up to 2300 MMR. So it's kind of like bronze one to gold three, I believe is that MMR range or silver one. <laughs> so this is going to be incredible to see. What could Beep Boop do? We're playing Frost. It's a big four player map. It's obviously a super old school one. Dark competed on this map for years back in Heart of the Swarm. Beginning of Legacy of the Void. We brought it back for a short while as well. So we've got Dark playing Protoss. Interesting. Up against Beep Boop playing Zerg in the top right. All right. Very, very nice to see how this one goes. Now Beep Boop's going to open up with a 13 pool. Okay. Okay. A very aggressive opening. That can also keep you very safe, potentially. And to be fair, when we're talking about this League of Player, no hate on bronze silver players, but it's it's rare to see them even just building things early on. So the fact there's been a bloody spawning pool, a drone, an overlord, and now another drone, already spending the money pretty well. Oh, Dark. Oh, Dark, you naughty boy. Dark planning a cannon rush here going forge first. Now, the problem is he really should be doing the gate version of the cannon rush. I can tell Dark, I mean, this is going to be good for killing an expansion, but not against a 13 pool, actually. I mean, early Zerglings could smash this cannon rush, and he doesn't have a gateway started yet. He's really needs, like, if this was the parting version of the rush, he'd have a gateway, but he's actually planning a Nexus right now. Wait, 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 Dark, what are we doing, mate? You can't go a Nexus here. What are you doing? Okay, there we go. He's going to put the gateway down. He's still, and there we go. He finds him as the last position. Comes in, sees this hatchery, and is like, oh, damn, it's spawning pool first. But nothing's been produced just yet. Just yet. So there is still a great chance to cannon rush here. Comes in, pretending he's scouting. No gas down yet for Dark. He's still probing up. This is the loosest cannon rush I have ever seen. You can tell Dark is just making it up as he goes right now. I mean, what? He drops a gas now. Come on, you've got to use the forge. Surely he drops a Nexus. Uh, hello? Hello, Dark? Um, what? <laughs> this is such a bad opening. Now, I mean, this already means Beat Proof's going to last to at least five minutes, right? He can still kill him. He's going to set up a proxy up here on the high ground. But Beat Proof with the 13 pool scares Dark off the cannon rush and already is like, hells yeah! Spreading creep in my main base because creep's a good thing to do. I'm going to kill your probe, which means you can't proxy anything else up here because I'm going to kill your only probe. So it's just a pylon. That's all you've got there. The cyber core coming down incredibly late for Dark. So he's got no tech coming out. <laughs> this is truly an artistic imp impersonation of a Protoss build order by Dark. Uh, I mean, Dark is known as one of the loosest pro gamers out there. He likes to play like fast and loose and kind of wild styles, right? But that is what it is, you know? He just kind of, uh, he just kind of does his own thing and figures it out. I just, I look at this and I'm like, man, Warpgate's just started. What can you do with this? Maybe drop a Twilight? Yeah, okay. He's going to drop a Twilight down here. I'm like, maybe you could warp in some DTs there. Or like big charge lot all in or something like that could do it, right? For now, he's going to try and chrono some Adepts to put some pressure on. There's a Lair already finishing for Beep Boop. <laughs> Beep Boop's got some creep spreading out. He's going to spread that one as well. And there we go. Look at this. Okay, so we've got we've got two bases up. We're going to go Hydras. <laughs> two base Hydralisk. I love it. I love it, Beep Boop. Um, I think he's going to really struggle even just against the Adept and the Zealot coming across the map. There's a few more gateways. And yeah, you know Charge or Glaives is about to go down. He's going to go Glaives. There we go. I think Charge would be better for killing the buildings. But Glaives, of course, will get in there pretty hard and fast. Hydra Den is not quite finished. Beep Boop's going to need to build some defensive units. He's going to build a Spine Crawler. But the thing is, the trick to defend this is A, moving some drones at it. And I don't know if Beep Boop knows how to do that. Let's see if Beep Boop can, can get that one going. There's an Adept in the main base and a Zealot in the natural. The drone's not helping out the Queen in the natural, which means she might go down there. I'm not sure if a Zealot beats a Queen. I think because it attacked the spine, the queen will win that one, but the adept does get some kills as well. The drones do fight in the main. Beep Boop's doing pretty good. I'm impressed. Beep Boop holds off, has five hydras on the way. Beep Boop hasn't put on this second gas geyser yet, but the problem is that glaive adepts are going to be so powerful up against this. Now, there's a stalker building, which is interesting because I don't really think there's any overlords out there. So that stalker's going to rally across just to try and pick off some of these guys. 
But there's like Hydra, Ling, and a Spine on two base, which is not too terrible, especially if that Spine Crawler moves to the front. Beep Boop does not have a fantastic economy, but having just slow Zerglings tanking for your Hydras, yeah, it's it's gonna be okay. It's gonna take a few rounds of Warpids before Dark can really deal with this. And that's gonna get Beep Boop to like the seven minute mark at least. Dark is literally, is he just trying to complete the pattern at this point? Dark, I think, mind gamed himself on this four player map scouted him last didn't figure out what's happened against the lowest player he's played so far in the challenge the silver one gold three player and and he's actually he's actually gonna take potentially the longest out of any of his games up to this point are we literally seeing the reverse curve that i always i always talk about diamond players doing worse than plat but i wouldn't expect a diamond players to do worse than silver players and yet we might just see it here beat boot building more hydras doesn't quite have these important upgrades just yet that's a lot of adepts with glaives finished oh my god they do a lot of damage beat boot ah get behind the spy crawler ah okay okay the adepts are gonna do some absolutely devastating damage here a few of the adepts do go down but beat boot ow 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 if that spine was up front it would have tanked so much damage and done so much damage as well there but Dark's just going to avoid that Spine Crawler. It's a Silver League Spine Crawler. You guys know I talk about Silver League Spores, Cannon Spines every day. It's uh, They're always in a position where it doesn't really help. <laughs> Beep Boop, try to hang on. But I think there's, you know, even with some Hydras popping out, there's some Fragile versus Adepts. Adepts just get on top of them so quickly. And I think Dark should be able to take everything out. However, can you get some drones out? That's what you've got to do is Beep Boop right now. Extend your duration in this game. Run some drones on the map. Start hiding buildings. But Beep Boop not doing it. Beep Boop still trying to fight. Get the drones out. Drone to the corner. Drone to the corner. Build some extractors. You could keep alive for an extra 45 seconds. Oh, that's genius. That's genius. He's going to run a spine crawler away. That counts as a structure. Dark, Dark seen it. Dark seen it. Dark's like, where'd it go? He, he knows there's a spine. Oh, no, don't root it. Run it away. Run it away, dude. <laughs> he does see the spine crawler running away, so he knows where it is at least. So even an uprooted spine crawler, spore crawler does count for allowing that. We're not allowing lifted buildings to count, but an uprooted uh, spinal spore absolutely still counts. If you bother walking one of those off creep into a corner and hiding it, that is totally fine. Unfortunately, this guy does try to stand his ground. And as much as he gives that stalker a good feeding of the tentacle, the stalker just swallows that one up whole, does not mind at all. And it looks like here we go. Dark's checking his corners around this base. And he's got that gateway up here on the proxy for those fast warp-ins, which allowed this push to get going. And he's going to be taking down the lair and everything else. So this is going to be coming up on about eight minutes, guys, which is pretty darn close to our previous best time. Beep Boop going to type out with the GG. Not a bad play at all. Dark going for the old two base Hydra, Ling, Bane. And Dark's already going to find the other buildings, but there are no buildings out there. So I think he's he's aware of the threat. He's hunting for it, but that's going to be it. GG. Right at about 7.48 if we go by the time that they died. However, on the score screen, it's always once the victory screen finishes, which will be like a few seconds later. Either way, for a bloody Silver League player, that is awesome. Well played by Beat Proof with an almost record time. In the top right of Data C, we've got Neo Pentane. Opening up very standard for now with that uh, depot wall off. Down in the bottom left, we've got Dark. Now, how is Dark going to approach this? He's going to go up with a 16 pool. I think this is a good way to start things off, right? So basically, this is going to allow you to get out earlier tech. You can go for a few Ravages really early and try to bust them. Or you could tech up to something like a Nidus Worm. Now, Neo Pentane looks like he's already preparing to build a bunker in the wall off, which is going to make it hard to break. However... Neopentane will need to get two gases up very quickly, right? A lot of players get so focused on the wall, but if you don't get up a tank early enough or a cyclone, then Ravages are going to be able to bust your wall. So I wouldn't be surprised if Dark getting a hatchery obviously needs a bit more production. He doesn't want to be all in on his first few Ravages, but he can start sieging him with those biles and go from there. Neopentane onto that first gas with three workers. Pretty good execution so far from Pentane. But did build that second depot well before it was needed. And with no second gas, you can see the build order starting to look a little rough here. Building a bunker already at a minute and a half in the game. The second gas goes down. I, uh, I mean, as long as we're not building Reapers, we're still going to get the factory started soon after two minutes, which will be pretty good. And indeed, Dark, no surprises here. Roachhorn and six Zerglings to kick things off. Now, for those who don't know, Dark has woken up well early today uh, as well. And uh, we're just going to mute those alerts. Make sure those don't come through too much. There we go. Beautiful. And um, all right. Six seconds coming across. He's woken up well early, guys. He said uh, he screwed up his sleep schedule recently. Um, staying up really late. 
and as a result, he wasn't sure he'd be here in time. He's already saying, wow, because there's a bunker on the high ground. He's like, oh, seriously, dude? <laughs> uh, Pentane's like, dude, I'm playing smart. I don't want to die. I've got my factory building. I'm staying on one base, putting Marines. The Zergis can't really do anything. Dark is still going to commit to four Ravages, but I think... I wonder, does he just commit to non-stop Ravages and try to try to bust? Engineering Bay is still wall off. Wow, Neopentane is trying to build a thick wall off here, guys. A thick wall off. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Double engineering bay at the front to wall it off. Uh, second barracks goes down that factory. Tech lab. Getting those tanks building continually is really important. Pentane still has not built an orbital. You might think, why is he doing such a noob thing? Um, guess what? He wants to build a planetary here just to keep himself alive longer. Already dropping the question mark in chat. He's like, yeah, when, when's the attack coming? What, what you got for me, Dark? What do you got for me? And Dark, I mean, the beast that he is, he's building more Zerglings. But he doesn't have Ling Speed. Which means he's going to do a Ravager Slow Zergling bust. Oh my. Oh my. Guys, guys, this is reminiscent of Raidor's first game in the Holdout Challenge. This is so reminiscent of that where, for those who don't remember, the guy just walled off on one base. Terran Verso, I think it was Kalyan was his name. And Raynor could not bust him. But oh, you got to get repairing, buddy. Where's the tank? The tank only just started and the repair's a little bit late as well. Neo Pentane. Oh my gosh, he's got to get that tank out. That tank is so late. Oh my god, it's still not out. Okay, without the tank, Dark may be able to just bust him. The thing is, Dark so all in. He's only on 16 drones. He really doesn't have much of a transition if this doesn't work out. It's hilarious, though, because it is a slow zergling all in. I actually think he should shove up that ramp, and he does. He goes for it. No wall off. No wall off in time. The Biles are going to kill the repairing SCVs. Oh, Neopentane's in trouble right now. The tank is out the front, but that tank is in the open. Neopentane's going to try and pull it back and siege it in the mineral line, but the Drilly Boys are already getting overrun. Oh, Neo Pentane needed that tank up earlier and needed to reinforce that wall with all the buildings. But no, this is not a repeat of the Kalyan Raynor game. And you know what, guys? Neo Pentane said, if I can last to the five minute mark, I'm counting it as an absolute victory. I think it's going to take Dark 30 seconds to kill the buildings. I think it's going to happen. Remember, he can't lift the buildings where he can, but they will not count unless they're landed. This tank's going to pop out. But all it'll do is siege up and die after getting, what, one shot off? Yeah, not even going to kill anything. Friendly fires his own Marines as well. The Marines will kill a single Zergling, so it does buy a little bit of extra time. But Dark, just absolutely no stress at all. He's like, yep, Ravages Lings, easiest victory of my life, dude. Easiest victory of my life. Now, we've also had people coming into these show matches with fighting words. So for those who didn't see the interview before the show, remember... Dark has said, if any of these players actually legitimately think they can literally do anything to him, even make him sweat, he he wants their their, their in-game names sent to him as a list so that he can he can basically hunt them down, similar to Jay and Silent Bob uh, finding the internet trolls and, and beating them up on their doorstep. Uh, <laughs> and there we go, we're covered in five minutes thirty. Last depot is gonna go down, and that is gonna be a five minutes and thirty-four seconds for game one. All right, all right, all right, guys. The biggest test yet. Clan Kagan's LW, LW, LL, WL. <laughs> the Terran player in the bottom left, or top left, sorry, of all arena. The bottom left, Dark, playing Protoss. Now, Dark said, hey, I think I played this guy in an open tournament one time. So Dark's like, actually played against this player before. He was saying, all arena. He was like, yeah, you want to host a fun map? You could host all arena. Look at this map. It is tiny. And there's these tiny little bridges across. If you get this watchtower, you see 50% of the map. It is such a silly map. And, I mean, I can't imagine Dark's going to do anything other than Proxy Void Ray or something. But who knows? Maybe not. Um, we've used to see a lot of Proxy Void Ray in these challenges from Rain or from Scarlet. They kept bringing out a lot of those Protoss cheeses. Dark hasn't really been as quick to cheese his opponents just yet. And he's going to come in with a very early probe and start harassing that Barracks SCV. Now, there is also an island in between the players, a gold base island. So there is a chance where you could float a building, land it on that island, and that that's allowed. I mean, I haven't ruled that out, guys. I, I haven't said floated buildings don't count. I have said floating building doesn't count while it's floated, but you can lift it as long as it's landed before the rest of your buildings are eliminated. That absolutely could be a dirty thing you could do. I didn't even think about that, but that could be disgusting. Now, very wise, double gas one base opening, very smart here for the Terran player. That's going to allow you to get a lot of tech units out, be really safe, you can build like a cyclone into like tanks and marines and all that sort of stuff. Dark here, he's going double gas opening. 
Um, does have three workers on one gas, so a little inefficient there. Should be 2-2 two, two, um, first. But we see a lot of players do that these days. Orbital Command on the way. Reaper as well. SCV coming on in. And, okay, that SCV pulling back right now. We've got the probe chasing it out as well. Probefully back on the right side. Now, I really wonder, is a Masters player going to let his ego get the better of him? If LW, we're just going to call him LW. Um, it's not LBW, but LW. Uh, just leg wicket. Uh, if LW just walls off on one base, bunkers, tanks, turrets, all that stuff, it's going to be really hard to knock him out of the game, right? A Masters player just macroing on one base, up lots of units sitting there defensive is going to be huge but i feel like the terran's going to build like a tank or a cyclone and then it's going to try and expand and play a normal game you can see already pulling workers off the gas geysers and that to me speaks of of an eagerness to go do some other stuff now the reaper here getting chased off by the adept the adept will be able to get one more head off reaper should be able to escape but oh no it changes directions panicky miscontrol there so the reaper achieves nothing dark already has a proxy pylon up and a stargate He's going to go for a Nexus as well. Widowmine is on the way, as well as a Starport right now. Marines being produced two at a time out of the reactor. The Adept definitely could do a little bit of damage to the wall off. Shouldn't be massively impactful, though. And I think we'll be seeing an early Oracle, most likely for Dark here. Now, okay, going to do a bit of a scan. Doesn't quite see that Stargate. That's a real bummer. And you've got to look at this and say, well... It must be an expansion because there's no tech on either of these pylons. But realistically, that uh, Stargate is just outside of vision. I mean, that doesn't even look... It looks like it should have been spotted by that, doesn't it? But it's just... Boy. It's barely SCV there, of course, ready. because this was scouted earlier from that SCV scout. It is actually going to be the Oracle to start things off. Armory's on the way, so it's going to be Invisible Widow Mines. I don't know if this makes a lot of sense. I think that's a bit... It's an aggressive build order. I guess if you just build units behind it and stuff, that'll be good. But please don't do a Thor roll in because a lot of people behind this do a Thor Marine SCV all in. Technically, that could take out Dark there. Excuse me, guys, burping the mic like an absolute savage. Um, there's nothing at home to defend right now, though. Just a shield battery, which does not help First Widow Mines. Oracle will do a little bit of damage, but the Marines will get over there in time. Oracle needs to pull out. Oh, Oracle's going to go down. It managed to kill five SCVs, guys. But losing the Oracle means, you know, it's it's done for now. Phoenix is on top of this. Two Adepts are here. Will they be able to kill a Widow Mine before it unloads? Oh, not very good Widow Mine positioning. Oh, no. That's a bit of a bummer. He needs to borrow this the moment that gets dropped. Oh, no. Is that going to die? Oh, no. Oh, LW not getting a single Widow Mine in the ground. And the Oracle was the only detection. And he is building a Thor as well. So LW following a pre-planned build order. He's going to deny a little bit of mining here, kill one probe, but this could have done so much more because now the Oracle comes out, uses a revelation, and does clean it up. Whereas Dark already back to mining, up 12 workers right now. Thor, Medivac, and more Marines should be building as well. So yeah, LW is going to pull the boys and move out. I would move out right now and pull most of my SCVs if we're going to commit to the all-in. You can tell LW is going to do it. Now, what does Dark have to defend? Dark has no units. Nothing that beats this. Three Adepts, an Oracle, and a Phoenix or two. Oh, he does spot it now. But guys, he's got no units. And he's got three gates. He's got to make Stalkers and Batteries right now. He needs DPS, Damage Output, Stalkers. He needs Stalkers really badly. Guys, LW's shoving right now with a very scary push. He's not looking to holdout. He is looking to go for the automatic win. You obviously win the holdout challenge if you win the game. There is a stasis trap there, though. He's got to be careful of that one. That stasis trap gets... Okay, only four SCVs. Not too bad. But there we go. The medevac is going to get taken down by those Phoenix pretty quickly. The SCVs trying to repair, trying to take down some of these units. The Marines doing what they can. The battery overcharge, though, is working so well and very well done by Dark. He's going to be able to defend it. And there we go. I told you guys, what if your ego gets the better of you? What if instead of turtling up, you go for the win? And we've seen it yet again. Another player. The higher level players, they just have a bit too much of that virgin energy. You know, it's the low effort Silver League chads who just wall off their base. And they go, yeah, I'm just going to wall off. But it's your Masters and your Diamond players. They've got that tryhard energy. And they're like, I could beat Dark. I could take him down. I could do it. I mean, it was a good effort. I do think if those Widow Mines burrowed, maybe if the push got across just 20 seconds faster, maybe just maybe it could have worked out. He's hiding a command center up there as well, which is very cute to buy time. And it's still hard to push him out of the game, even though that attack didn't quite work. But I have to once again just 
just absolutely toot the horn of the silver and gold players who perform so bloody well. Now, Dark's going to struggle to finish him off. That is an issue, I guess. I, I kind of feel like he could just shove up the ramp with Mass Stalkers. But it's it's tough just because the Thor with 7 range does outrange the Stalkers. But uh, Dark is actually taking a third and waiting for Blink. He also finds the command center, so that's very effective. I guess about 8 minutes 30 is probably when the Stalkers are going to just blink in and, and win the game. They'll run up, blink on the tank, kill it, and then go after that as well. Oh! Oh, that's very clever, but he's not going to get there. The only way this works is if he can actually hide the uh, the building. If he lifts a building and lands it here, then the Phoenix won't be able to deal with it. That's going to be his best bet on that one. But definitely LW swapping into just the Chad. I'm going to turtle up and be an idiot mode. I love it. This is the best way to do it here. This is the best way. Blink is getting closer and closer to finish those three gateways with a fourth one coming up. Looking pretty good right now. Dark's got that Phoenix control. So we're going to have a tank, a lib, another lib will come up soon. Interestingly, he's expecting the blink on the right side, so he's kind of got the lib focused over there. Okay, how many stalkers is this? 11 stalkers? I don't think that's enough yet. Especially not with bunkers and a second tank. Yeah, LW's got a fan. I don't... This is not breakable. Not yet. Not with this. Nope, 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 nope. Already loses a stalker. The SCV's getting ready to be pulled as well. I mean, he's checked all the corners as dark, but he doesn't have the, the numbers to overwhelm just yet. Oh my god, with the bunkers being built. Dude, LW is actually going to turtle up for a long time, despite doing a failed SCV pull. LW now is like, bunkers, tanks, libs. This is a disgusting, disgusting, uh, beautiful way to do it, dude. All right. DT Shrine will come in. Fleet Beacon as well. Dark's like, oh man. Do I need to get Tempest to break this? He's going to go to Stargate Tempest to siege this down. Problem is, there's a Thor, and the Thor kind of does counter Tempest. It's pretty hard. So just one or two Tempests ain't going to do much. Should probably have just one or two SCVs over here auto-repairing. The tanks, of course, doing great damage whenever those Stalkers come forward. Going to try and build some more batteries and even a Forge! <laughs> okay, i got to look at Dark's face over here on my second monitor. I'm just like... <laughs> He's just like, yep, I'm going to build cannons outside your base. It's actually three Stargate Tempest. Good point, Twitch chat. Oh my god. Artosis pile on there in the middle of all that production. The third base is up and full of workers. He's even taking a fourth on the gold right now is dark. And he's like, god damn it, this Masters player is going to last a while, isn't he? But those Tempests will be on the way. Two at a time for now. He will be building a third one soon. Turrets being built as well. Now the turrets aren't really going to help first the Tempests, so... He actually needs to build another Thor, but he doesn't know that, does he? So LW here trying to just build up on one base. I mean, it's a beautiful setup. The bunkers, the tanks, the libs, the Thors. I definitely do feel it's stalker uh, proof at this point, right? I, I, I mean, maybe you could get a prism in the back, warp in charge lots to get on top of the tanks, and then you could breach it with guys at the front as well. But DT walks up the ramp, gets instantly blasted. That Thor is technically trapped in there. Can't move until these siege tanks move out of the way. <laughs> so it is, yeah, it is trapped a little bit. But that is okay. First Tempest coming across the map. I think it takes about three Tempests to beat a Thor. With the batteries as well, he can definitely do okay. And here we go. Some SCVs getting pulled. Vikings and more Thors are being built. Tectonic destabilizers. That's plus 40 damage to buildings. Upgrade is on the way. It started upgrading, but it is not ready just yet. Vikings going to run forward. Ain't going to be able to do much, mate. Tempests have insane range versus air units. Stalkers running forward as well. Good blink back micro so far by Dark. Does manage to take out one depot. The tank fire does push those Stalkers back. Tempests are going to start sieging him down, though. Pretty damn hard. It is four bases, including a gold. And even though this has added a few minutes to the timer and LW is doing fantastic here, Dark at the same time is actually at a very impressive point in terms of his production. I mean, those Tempests are going to grow in number so quickly. And it's like, yeah, there's two Thors. Yeah, there's two Vikings. The Vikings are going to get one shot. The bunker's starting to go down as well here. Now, can he sneak a base out? That would be the best thing. If he can sneak a building out and go land that on the goal... But because there's Tempest rallying, I don't know if it really matters. Yeah, maybe if you could sneak one out the top, but there's a pylon over there watching as well. It really is just about buying time, and that's why the building armor upgrade is on the way right now. That Thor is going to try and fight. You can see how well the Thor does, but it needs SCVs repairing it. Absolutely needs to unseach that tank, shuffle that up, get some SCVs repairing this Thor right now. If you can get your Thors fighting straight up versus the Tempest, they smash them. 
go. Tempest coming forward as well. Crickle doing a nice tag. Trying to pick up these units. Another Liberator goes down. That Liberator is going to fall as well. Here we go. Tempest picking off units left, right, and center. They haven't really lost any just yet. So far, it's just been a DT four stalkers, two Oracle seven probes, and picking away, but unable to finish it quickly. Tempest are not a high damage unit. There we go. The stalkers are starting to run forward. The Phoenix dive in for the triple lift on the tanks. Oh my god. The tanks get dropped almost immediately though because of the turrets. The stalkers trying to get in. The DTs come in behind that. The Tempest's fighting the Thors. The last Thor goes down. The DTs are on top of the siege tanks. The CVs repairing aren't going to do jack. And I gotta say, dude, LW, I thought after that failed SCV rush, it was gonna be instant counterattack and death. You know what? It worked out. He recalls Tempest to the right side of the map because he's worried about there being a hidden base. Dark is assuming there's something out there, and in fact he is. Oh, a medevac snuck out two SCVs! I almost missed it! Oh, this is so clever! Oh, LW, you genius! Going for the double SCVs out there! This one's going to get by. He's already dropped one up there. That does get found by Dark. Dark. Oh, he, he blip, warps in Stalker's Blinks. Snaps it down. And LW is going to lose this last depot that's building up there. That armory. This depot will go down. And that's going to be GG at 13 minutes and 8 seconds. Bloody well played, LW. Hats off to you, mate.